It is yet another interesting episode of your favorite sports show, After Sports. My name is Mamia Joa, and we'd like to say a very big thanks to beautiful Benid for my workout outfit. What I have here is the tummy trimmer. It helps you cinch your waist, and it's also good when you're even when you're around the house. You can wear it around the house if you're not exercising. You can go to their stores, and they will hook you up. Again, to Davis Palace for holding us down with this segment is sponsored by them and then also you get to win a voucher from them. Today our guest is arguably one of the best goalkeepers Africa has ever known and unfortunately his journey ended just about three years after he started. Let's see what's coming up. Challenge of the day is brought to you by Davis Palace. Which year did Ali Jara retire from active football? Question again. Which year did Ali Jara retire from active football? The winner gets voucher for a massage, pedicure, manicure, gym, hairdo, and many more at Davis Palace. Send your answer with the hashtag AfterSportsGH to our social media platforms at AfterSportsGH. Our guest today is arguably one of the best goalkeepers Africa has had in the 90s. He started his career with home base club Accra Hearts of Oak. He was selected for the under-17 national team that qualified for Italia 91 under-17 World Cup, which Ghana won the trophy for the first time. He became paralyzed on September 5, 1993 after a successful tournament in Japan. Here to delve into his life after active football is Ali Jara. Welcome back. This is After Sports. My name is Mamia Jara. What you saw before was the jumping jacks. It's good for your whole body. I mean, lately with the food we eat and everything that's going and the stress, every day in and out stress, it's very good that when you wake up, you get some exercise then. So keep following us on our social media handles, After Sports GH, and then get to know what's going on. If you, if you miss an episode on TV, don't forget to go on YouTube, After Sports GH, and see what's happening with us. Now, let's see who is here. Welcome, Mali Jara. Thank you. This is After Sports, and it's wonderful to have you here. Nice. I'm, I'm most grateful to be on the show, After Sports Show. <laughs> What's going on with you? I heard you are the new um, assemblyman for your area. 
I can't be as an assemblyman. Why? <clears throat> I'm old, too old. Oh! I'm going, currently I'm now coming to uh, retirement, so I can't keep another busy job. Oh, but at least it's for the, the neighborhood. The community. Yeah. It's good to support. So what are you going to do to support? Mm, we go around uh, talking to each other. The government cannot do it alone. Uh -huh. But we can come together to help build a better place at where we are. Mm. So that's what we, we, we do. Oh, that's nice. So maybe if the next assemblyman is listening, he knows that when he comes, he has your full support. I think currently the assemblyman around our area is doing one of the great jobs. Oh, okay. And uh, a senior brother of Samini, mm. a musician. Oh, okay. He's the assemblyman. Ah. Samini lives around this area, mm. so. Oh, okay. It's good for us to support him. It takes only one uh, hot seat, one person to sit to on the on hot seat. seat and so then you guys support. support. Yeah. It's good. I mean, it's good to know you have the supporting mm -hmm. spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now tell us about yourself. What? How did you get into football? My name is Ali Jara mm -hmm. from Maganian International. Mm -hmm. I started from Mamplobi. Mm -hmm. I played fatalities, which I was picked to uh, a school festival or school team mm -hmm. to start my career with a coast football team, mm -hmm. which is FATA, currently Mighty Cosmos. Yeah. And I was picked from there. That's where I started my career. I was picked from Coast Festival, which Great Accra won. When was this? That was 89. Uh -huh. And I was picked from there to join the national under 17. Mm. That's where I started my career. Were you under 17 or you were over 17? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends upon uh, Ghanaians to judge. No, I'm, I'm talking to you right now. Yes. Uh, whatever I say here uh -huh. will reflect to Ghanaians. They would have their final say. Yeah, but we are not leaving it to them to judge. I'm asking you. You said you were chosen for under 17. Yes, I said were yes. Were you really under 17 or you were over 17? I am really under 17. You were under 17? Yeah, I was. Okay. By then. By then you were. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what happened from there? From there, we were, we, we were picked. We are allowed 100 plus, whereby I was picked to join the under 17 as a goalkeeper oh, okay. before House of Oak spotted me mm. and I joined Accra House of Oak. Oh, okay. So that's how it started. Right, but um, if you were under 17, like I'm asking you were young, how, how was the support from your parents like? My mom said no to football. <laughs> My dad said yes mm. to football because I have a background. My father came from a sports background, but not a keen sports horse okay. racing. Oh, oh, oh. That's where, where I started. Yes, I was a jockey before. I was a good rider before I joined. Where, soccer. where in Ghana? I was born and bred in Mamplobi. So Mamplobi, there was um, horse, yes, horse, horse racing. Yes, no horse racing is at uh, ministries by oh, then. Oh, okay. okay. But the stables. Oh, well, oh, okay, right. So I was born and bred in the stables. Uh -huh. So I understand riding whatever concerning horse. Mm. That's where we started our career because every we have seven siblings, mm. one female, six boys. Oh. So we all understand horse railing, whatever. That's where we started. But so, I moved from horse racing to soccer. So, wait, that's it. The way you said you like everything stable, does it mean you understand horse language? Yes, you, you talk to them, they understand what you say because uh, you are with them. Mm. You understand what it says. When you feel, you, 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 you see a horse having colic, or stomach pain, you can feel it. Oh, okay. So, oh, that's, that's nice. 
Uh, so um, your parents, your, your dad supported, your mom didn't. So was there ever a quarrel between them over you? Not at all. When my mom talking about there's juju in football, my child will not play football, my dad said no. Leave him to pick his whatever he wants to do. Mm. At the end of the day, it's his choice. Mm. So that's where the only thing my dad talked, he uh, uh, became hungry of going to play football coming house late. Oh, okay. He that's wanted all. to come early? Yeah. Right. But so later on, your mother just gave up the whole thing. My mother passed away, which she couldn't see how best her son rose to be. Oh. That's what something which, when I think about it, pains me. Mm. Because she decided me not to play football. My dad allowed me, and I was able to climb to top. Mm. Wish he was. I wish he was there to see what I did. Right. But but unfortunately, it takes only God who knows well, the best. So rest in peace. I'm sure she's happy wherever she is. Yes. So, um, what about school? Were you doing well at school? Were you skipping classes because of football? No, I don't skip classes. Not at all. But in, due to the death of my mom, I have to move out of education to concentrate on soccer because we are many mm. and i think my decision was the best mm. nobody understands it because i rose to support everybody to go into the university oh, wow. so it's something which uh, i sacrificed myself for mm. the family okay but you, you sit back here and then you think over what you did earlier. Do you have any regrets? Do you wish you, 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 you're you just taking care of just you or you're happy for what you did? Uh, the good book says, whenever you want to go outside, you might take good care of your house before moving outside. Mm. So the decision I took was, I think, the best because after the death of my, our mother, life didn't, it's not too easy for us. Mm. Not at all, not at all. Single parent is not easy. Mm. So God lifted me up to support whoever, I think is a blessing. Right. And whatever happens, it has written before it happens. So Re I don't understand that. Written where? from the heavens. Oh, okay. You seem to be a believer. What faith do you belong to? I am a Muslim. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. A very religious one. Yes. All right. Now let's go back to your days of football. So you were you were picked for the under 17. Yeah. What went on from there? I think uh, it wasn't easy by then because coming from the coast, it's, it's not easy meeting a class of goalkeepers to be among the best three. It's an honor mm. by them because it's not easy because I went and met, I think, three top goalkeepers in the premiership. I was the only goalkeeper which was picked from course, lower roots, lower. grassroots. Mm. So we started over there. We started the campaign from 89. So 91, we started the preliminaries, the World Cup qualify, which uh, we were qualified. I remember because we went to Celerion, that was our second game. Mm. We played, but we, were, we, we beat them two here. We went over there, it was 2-1, which Ghana is about to qualify. And Benowu got injured, mm. and I was told to warm up. And I said to myself, can I? because look at uh, 40,000 capacity, it's mm -hmm. not easy. It's not, yeah. So gradually we, were, we qualified to World Cup. That was the first time Ghana won the Italian 91 mm. in, in Italy. We played against Spain, which we beat them 2-0. Oh. It was 2-0 or 2-1 in the final, which Ghana won. 
the first ever juvenile world cup mm. it's 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 a it's a, a good feeling yeah, we had it has, it has because be. we've not seen even we've not played in the highest level of football whereby we were able to win a world cup mm. it's a plus for us that's where everything started but is it true your coaches went for juju and then all of you were involved to win the the world cup <laughs> yes i think we played out of the best football in the World Cup. So it wasn't Juju? Juju don't play football. I don't believe in Juju okay. which plays football. Because we cross a lot of rivers before we reach uh, uh, Spain. Okay. And in the uh, pre-season training we went, we beat German under 17, 8 now. Mm, so mm. Shows we that was, are ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lamte, Yao Preku, Isaac Asari, Mejima Bans has tasted 89 World Cup. Mm. So they are more matured mm -hmm. before it reaches our time. Yeah, and these people were able to join us to play it. Mm -hmm. And they were professional mm -hmm. by them. Mm -hmm. So they. So you had understand. a good team? Yes, we do. And then you trained? We trained, but we, we stayed for, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. we stayed for about two years in camp. Wow. So we, we understand each other. Sami Oseiko for Daniado, uh, Dia, Mohamed Gagos. We do understand that. We started playing the Premiership as well. Mm -hmm. So we started blending with the top mm -hmm. ranking. So mm -hmm. going to the youth football, we were above the standard which everybody was expecting. Mm -hmm. And our time, if even we play the friend or match and someone is better than you, you go home and the one will be in camp. So you have to play. You always out have of to your do best. best. Right. So um Around the time, what was your motivation? What was that thing that was keeping you going, even when you are tired? Like, what was that thing that was keeping you? I on think it's self motivation, nothing else. Because by then, not, we don't know about winning bonuses. Mm, so it wasn't about money? No, not at all. It wasn't. We are there to fight for the nation. Really? That's what is in our mind. The mindset is to go and kill. So that's what we do. We fight wow. for something because I, I think even the per diem which was given to us before we went to uh, from Germany to uh, Italy, Gago squander all his money because whatever he sees, he buys. He buys. <laughs> because he felt, ah, we will never get this chance again. But when you ask Mohammed, your money will finish it, yeah, don't worry, I will score so that we get something. <laughs> Right, yes. but that, that's amazing because I don't think that's the case now. Uh, you you don't just get up and say I want to do this just for the fun of it. You, there has to be some monetary gains. But I think I do support blasters currently charging before dying for the nation mm. because the nation is not worth dying for. Nobody cares about after your career is zero. Uh, you mean Ghana, our motherland, is not worth dying for? That's true. He paid his dues, we'll be right back. Welcome back, this is After Spot, and we are talking to Ali Jara. You said something that... Um, uh, Charging before. <laughs> the nation is not worth dying for. Oh yeah, so you remember. Yes, I do. <laughs> what? Why do you say that? I think it wasn't from my regime. Mm. 65, 63, 65, who won the African Cup, 82, who won the African Cup, came to our regime. Everybody is complaining. You, are complaining about this you know something? Football. Mm. We don't earn social security, we don't earn insurance. It's hand to mouth. We are like soldiers who goes to war for the nation mm. after the end of your career. And football is a seasonal job. Mm. After the end of your career, then it's zero. Nobody cares about you. It's like leaving you, the nation is leaving you on the desert without water. 
So killing you slowly. If I will tell my story, Usei Kofi will tell his story, Peter Lamte will tell his story. I, I got paralyzed age 17. Age 17? Yes. I was picked to national team age 15. Mm -hmm. Education wise, tell me, nobody teaches us in the camping, so your career has been stopped at the end of you being called to national team. After the end of your career, you can't do anything with your name, with everything. You can't do anything again. So it's like leaving you in the desert to die slow. I got paralyzed if it's 17, which I was almost grateful to the nation, taking me to uh, London for treatment for one and a half year. After that, what next? I owned a life to lead on. I have two children. If a child comes to your house, to house from school to his father or mom to ask about even ice cream and you can't fulfill to buy your child an ice cream, whilst your name has been spread all over the nation, it, it, it's not worth dying for. It's serious. Nobody cares about it. When you talk about it, they don't care. I always say, we are not saying that the nation cannot take care of all of us, but the nation can send some of those who have played war, put them into pension, to at least get something out of it. Every football ticket do sell at the uh, stadiums. 17.5% goes to education. True football, why can't they give us 1% to support soccer players as footballers? And uh, it says, I played only three years and I got paralyzed. So 26 years, I have to struggle for my own self which is very bad. So tell me, I'm putting it across Ghanaians. If the blasters charge 10,000 mm -hmm. before playing, mm -hmm. before dying for the nation, mm -hmm. which some people did before mountain, which we stood tall for, Madagan. I've played three juvenile World Cup. I won one in 93, in 91, in mm -hmm. Italia 91. Australia 93, that was under 20, which we were beaten by, Bry by Bryson in the That's final. Uh, the same 93, we were beaten by uh, Nigeria in the final in Japan. We won African Cup, the first introduction in the African Cup of Nations, which was under 20, which Ghana won, which we won. So four medals which I brought to the nation. But what caused the paralysis? After in uh, 93, I came back home, I fell back pain, and that's it. I got back paralyzed. Pain. Yes. Nobody knows what happened. The, the medical officers couldn't, I mean, get to the root of it? Not at all. I was sent to the best doctors in the UK. They couldn't see the actual cause. They refer it that it's a green barrel syndrome, mm. but the cause, you know, okay. it's only God to note. Is, is there something like that in your family? Not at all. And even what happens to me happens in the 60s. That's what the whites refer to oh, in the okay. 60s. Oh, okay. So and it, it takes only one, one person. It, it was an Italian. Oh. Well, because nobody knew the cause. You fight it on your own. No treatment. So you go back home and fight your own course. So after the nation took you to London for a year and a half mm. and they brought you back, that was it? Yes. Nobody followed up? Not at all. I, I supposed to be going to review each and every year. Who cares? As in to London? Yes. What about your colleagues? My colleagues. Uh, it's been 26 years which each and everybody has retired from football. Mm. 
everybody is thinking about his own self and his family. You can't take your burden on people. Mm. You must struggle on your own. So I think sometimes I'm, I'm most grateful to the Almighty because he has taught me and showed me the route so that the way that it's only him in the room. Yeah. When you are in this world, put your trust and everything into the Almighty God. He will do whatever you needed for you. When you put your trust in someone, who or she will fail you along the line. Along the line. So my belief in what I dwell on it, I wake up in the at dawn, I pray to the Almighty to grant me favor and wisdom. That's what I dwell on. So at, at age, I mean, within your three years of playing, were you able to make enough money? Uh, my time, someone will say, at that time it's money. But uh, my time, House of Folk, salary is four cities. You can calculate from 90s and see how much blog or uh, plot will be bought or normal salaries in work in places. Our time, it's, we don't play true football. Nobody knows that football fetches. Mm. So whatever we, it's like hand to mouth. Mm. It takes you to at least, it's you. That's why most of our colleagues who has played and played for a longer time, from 90s to 2000, don't end much unless you go to professional. Yeah, but so when you when you were when you were into football around the time, were you thinking about other means of making money? Uh, 17 years. Yeah. Nah, novice. Novice right. learned know nothing. We enjoyed to play football. Mm. So it was a risk you took, you know that. It was a risk. It was a risk, gamble, mm -hmm. and I think I think I will say I went my gamble. Because mm. at the end of the day, the networks or the network who is sent in, in front of me pays huge before you'll be sent. But it takes a phone call, we are coming, and that's it. Mm. So I'm, more, I'm most grateful. Right. I sacrifice for my nation. I achieve what I must do. It's up to the nation to pay us back. To pay your dues too. Yeah. And now, I'm still paying my dues to the nation. I train three, I've trained 360 goalkeepers. The nations have won laureates through the goalkeepers I've trained. I, I, I'm, I'm really interested in that, but I want to really know what's happened between that period before you started the, the, I mean, the academy to train the, the players. After your three years, you, you went to London for a year and a half. You came back. When you came back, were you walking? No, I was with using crutches mm -hmm. and a wheelchair. In a, in a wheelchair? Mm. Okay. And then, um, what, what, what about your family? Because you said you actually sacrificed take care of your other siblings. So what happened within the period? Were they now taking care of you? What about the monies that it wasn't coming? How did you manage? I was very lucky to be picked by Ghana National Fire Service. Okay. Which I worked with Ghana National Fire Service. Has helped me keeping me on my toes and being a coach as well. So what are you doing with national service? Like, I mean, fire fire service. service. My background in education is I am I went to ATTC before I stopped. I got a technical training mm -hmm. institute. And I'm a refrigeration. Oh okay. I, I I did a ref. And currently I am at the workshop at the training school maintenance oh, okay. which at the spraying department and refrigeration department mm. so that's where i went so at what age did you work with them um, with the national fire service at, at what age, age. Mm. after like my career mm. i was picked to so that's after your career after how many years then how many years 20 something 20 something years mm. oh, okay so you, were you still a teenager 
No, or you after I came back at young 18, yeah, yeah, 18, 19 before I joined. Oh, okay. So at what at what age or um, how many years were you able to stand on your feet again? After one year, I, I was, but I wasn't too comfortable. Mm. So I have to use two crutches mm. to you know have my balance. Mm. I started treating myself through northern region. That's that's the nature of my sickness. Okay. Because we don't have any medicine which can improve upon your nerves. It was a world, nerve issue you it had. Was a nerve. So whatever you have, you must use to buy drugs to keep your nerves uh, boost the nerves. Mm -hmm. And whatever you work for, you must use it to buy drugs mm. for yourself. Mm. That, that's what pains me most of the time. Oh, that's amazing because if they took you and then they, you came back, something should have happened. Something should have kept you for a period. So when, it's, it's, I still can't believe that you came back and nobody, or maybe they were coming home to, you know, see you maybe with some, oh, take this envelope, take this full stuff, do this, do that, maybe for a year or two before they stopped. If, if that happens and you come on set and talk bad about the nation, then I've been ungrateful. Wow, so nobody And I've can... been saying this for two and a half decades. Oh. I think I, I need someone who can come and stand tall and say, Ali Jara, you are lying. Mm. We don't come and say things to, for people to have favor, but things are happening. Most of our colleagues are dying. Mejima, Abdul Mejima died in a room for two days without nobody knows wow. about his death. A person who has sacrificed for the nation. Uh, one coach who captained in uh, 69 or so, to win the cup of nation, the second cup of nation, had stroke for ages and he died. He was buried. At the end of the buried, the nation will, or the ministries will send 22,000. Uh, That's all they know. I, 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 I don't know. Or oh, is it that maybe around your time, they didn't really know the importance of football it's as a nation? Who, can, who, who really knows about the welfare of Michael Isian now? Michael Yes. Unless you go go yeah. to see his whereabouts. Mm. Michael Lesson, who has sacrificed in the present generation, who played and got injured in uh, the time of Cup of Nation, mm. whilst his club needs him, he came to sacrifice for the nation. Who cares? Baba Rahman, they left him in the wilderness. It's okay, he's been called again to go to Afghan. That's the nation of the nation. We think about us, us, but not to think about the role or the place God has given you. You will account for it. We seem to forget about these things. Is it our fault to be a soldier, to struggle and fight for the nation? No. We play, when we go to World Cups or a tournament, we played God bless our nation, yeah. homeland Ghana, mm. to make our nation great and strong. Great and strong. That's the play. For you to be bold and then to defend, yeah. What is the nation doing back for us? How much would that cost for the nation putting former players into pension? Because if you give us all we will squander it. Mm -hmm. But going monthly to get it thought by thought, mm -hmm. I think is the best. I think you've, you've, said, you've said a lot, and then I really would, would go with the, the revenues collected at the stadiums. So at least if they can push something aside for situations like this, and maybe the footballers should also come together. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the old ones, you find, maybe you guys can find a way to put together an association and you guys can have one voice because we do have we do have Renfark, former footballers association we do have PFAG 
former professional footballers, which we've been heard all over the whole world. But it takes someone to work for us. Who is going to take a step? You can speak. It's up to whoever there to act, who will act in our favor. Sometimes they come, they, they fear to come out to talk. And some of our colleagues are dying, a painful death. Hmm. My master, Salif Wansan, needs only 15 Ghana cities. He had serious malaria, 15 Ghana cities. And he died and people paid more than 15 Ghana cities. Did he tell someone he needed 15 Ghana? Because I can see the pain in your eyes and it's... Did he tell someone he needed 15 Ghana cities? Sometimes uh, you can walk to office and you know about someone which now has name or God has given him whatever. And you see him walking by, going without even care. That's the nature of uh, the, uh, the, the way of the nature of what is going on in our system. Even you go to stadium to watch a football match and you will be blocked. You will be blocked at the stadium. Why? That going to watch a football match, a former footballer. They won't let you go in? Yes. Because you don't have a ticket? You must buy a ticket before you watch a match. No, I don't think I... I, I, I. As an old veteran, they won't let you go in because you don't have a ticket. I'm not the only person who can say so. But Whoever you go and interview, ask who majority as, unless a professional. Unless you're like a current professional player. Yes. But if you're an old veteran, they would, you, you, and you don't have you a ticket, will be, they will let Most you. of the people will be stopped at the gate. I have, look. Peter Lampe do speak about these issues each and every time we go to meetings. Peter Lampe was a go-king for more than two decades. When he is going to stay there, he's being sucked. Hey, where are you going? But someone who hasn't played even football before will be allowed. So it's, it's a norm in Ghana. Is it that we are... <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know if it's because we are heartless as a people. Because this whole thing goes, if, if the person is an old veteran and the fact that you've met the person at the, at the entrance alone should be like an honor. You should make everybody stand aside and let him pass. But for, for you to say that they would actually block you from entry, that's sad. So if you go for your meetings, what what... What, what decisions do you come to? What decisions? Yeah, in, in because... Ghana, when you are playing, you are a hero. When playing, hero. After the end of your career, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. Nobody cares. So it's like that. Uh, I really am really touched and happy that you are doing life after football program. Yeah, yeah. We need people to come out and see what is going on. In football circles. Yeah, because people actually, when you go like, oh, we, um, what's, what's the show about? We are, we are going into the lives of ex-footballers to know what they are doing. A lot of people say, oh, they've chopped Ghana money, they, they have a lot of money, what are you going, I mean, what's there to know? But, I mean, hearing the other side of the stories make it more real. And it's scary as a nation, because if we don't have a support system for those that have been there, they've laid down their lives for the nation, then we ask ourselves, where are we going? That means whatever you want to do, you must take something out before you, you give in your support. That's why they charge before they play. But I, 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 you know, what? most of the time, what I do say is most of the younger generation must at least go closer 
to the older mm. generation mm. to learn the mistakes they've been through mm. so that they will also they don't do the same mistakes. That's what the current generation must do. Mm. That's actually what the show is about. Put your money where your mouth is. Mm. Do the right thing at the time God has given you the chance so that in the next 20 years, mm. you can sustain. I think I like that. Put your money where your mouth is so that when the days of good are gone, you know, you have something to fall back on. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is After Sports and we are talking to the man, Ali Jara. It's, um, it's getting quiet. I don't want to say interesting, but if you just join us, keep watching. But you're talking about um, the younger generation getting closer to you guys. How do you think will be the best way to draw them close? Uh, this generation can never be closer to the older generation because they have their way of and the people they mingle with. Mm -hmm. It's different or ball game altogether. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have one person who likes you, who always come closer to you, seek advice right. from you. It's different because maybe at the time I was playing, most most of the currently current players are not. They are not even yet born Some by of them. them. Born, yeah. So. Uh, if you are not into sports or who or she passes through you, can never be closer to you. Mm. Right. And you can also always run in after them. It's impossible. Of course not. So uh, they must learn from. They must learn from you guys. Yes. But because. do you have any of the younger ones ever coming to you? I am fortunate to have been with most of them. Oh, okay. Do coaching, maybe mm -hmm. football team, mm -hmm. being a goalkeeper's mm -hmm. coach, maybe who or she rises through that rank to the highest level. Mm -hmm. So maybe one or two people knew, they see you, they are comfortable with you, they get closer. And some of us to criticize them too much. Ah, you goodness. can't you can't advise someone by criticizing him. It's no, that's their time. God knew that your regime will be over, someone's regime will come. Will start. So when you felt player A, it's not doing too well or misbehaving around, you must call and advise mm. the player. But coming on air, lambasting, it's not right. It's not working. That's what we also do. But this is their generation. God knows that your generation will be way maybe uh, three, four decades ago. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's God so it's who does it. it's just a seasonal thing and now yes. it's their season. Well, I'm sure we'll find a way to get that sorted. I, I, I want to I mean, keep your mood up a little bit. So I'm going to talk about your love life. When did you get married? Ages ago. Ages. Like ages 40 ago. years? Ages ago. <laughs> it's, if it's even more than a decade. So yeah. Ages okay, ago, more than a decade. Two decades. Okay. Ages ago. I met a lovely woman wow. called Mariama. She has been my backbone. She has been supportive. Mm. She has been everything. Mm. So I would say I'm most I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate. I've gotten it all. Because you can't go all the way outside, coming to the house without peace. Mm. It's it's it's. I'm most grateful to the Almighty each and every time. Things come. Uh, we, we we met. We marry. We had two kids, oh. Abdella and Fawaz, oh, yeah. two boys, who are doing very well. Is any of them trying to be a footballer? They are very good in, in football. Oh, okay. But they say their father to be, you know, what people saying outside sticks into their head. Mm. So they like education more than football. 
what, what are people saying now, Stag? I mean, your father, your father was a veteran. Your father was a star. Your father was this. He got hurt. Nobody cares. That's oh. So when they come, oh, da. I call the ball to try. Oh, mo, eh. She know better while I'm That's it. So, especially the uh, Facebook, Abdella. Thank you.